Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be testing out an EV charger by Cons. And since I don't personally own any electric vehicles, and my friend Chris has two Teslas and a Dodge minivan hybrid, I thought this would be the best way to test it out. So what I have right here is a Cons EV charger, and they sent me the one that does not have the display screen. So it is this one right here. And what we have inside the box is instructions that you want to read before you install the charger. And here, there's also templates. So when you drill the brackets, these are stickers. And to mount the charger, you need to mount both of these plates right here. And these stickers are templates. So it just makes it really easy to put these on, drill the holes, bolt these mounting plates on and this one is for the cord and then this one is for the charger itself so upside down right here is the charger as you can see you have your mounting holes the four of them so this plate is going to bolt like that and it comes with all the hardware you're going to need this is the cable holder and then it has the piece that bolts to there to hold the charger part or the, the end of the cord that you plug into your vehicle. So it's really a nice clean install. So here is the one without the display screen. It is a 10 kilowatt charger. It does have a nice long cord. The one thing I do like is the power cord that you're going to plug in isn't really super long. So you don't have a bunch of excess cord hanging around. You could shorten these if you wanted to, but it's really nice and compact. And then this one is nice and long to be able to get to the vehicle. You can have this mounted in a really centralized location so it's not taking up a bunch of space. The first thing I'm going to do is mount the bracket to hold the charger onto the wall. And it's really simple because they give you the hardware for everything. So you just thread these in. So now that is mounted, everything is ready to go. And how I like to mount these brackets is these larger circles to slip in the bolt is on the bottom. So the weight of the charger will hold itself on if one of these bolts comes loose. So for the sake of this video, the installation, my friend Chris wants to put it and mount it on this pole right here, where his old EV charger was, just because he has the outlet right here. The kit does come with all of the hardware to mount it into a wall. But the one thing is the bracket, if you're trying to mount it to a pole like this, is a little bit too wide, as you can see there. So what he's gonna have to do is have a custom bracket made and the holes for it to slip in are a little bit too small as you can see there because those are flanged and they are a little bit bigger than the screws that they come with to mount it to the wall. These are the screws that you would mount that to the wall with. And as you can see, these flange screws are a little bit wider. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have him make a bracket. And that's mostly because he wants to have it installed here. If we were gonna just mount it over into one of these masonry blocks, it would be a lot easier because we would just drill it and there's plenty of surface area. So that's not that big of a deal. It Next piece is the cable holder. This goes on really nice and easy. So now I have the charger mounted to the pole and all I need to do is plug this in looks like everything is good I pulled this charger out of the plastic and one thing I really do like is this rubber cap because you can install these outside and you don't want a bunch of water to get in them this is going to give it a go on his phone to see if he can get to set up. But he said a lot of EV chargers have app issues. Is like their biggest flaw. Oh, this might need to... Hold on. Let me... 
Well, it says bind device, and then I bound it, and then it says bound. And then mm -hmm. nothing happens. It's just. It's frozen now. Frozen. It says device is bound. Try it again. Device is bound. Is that the right? Yeah, that's right, true. Mm -hmm. Is this the other thing? Oh, for assistance? <laughs> <laughs> Try adding a device again. Success. Success. Enhance. Enhance. Device is bound. But then it just sits here. Doesn't do anything. Yeah. I think it's the app. Yep. But without and you want like the duration. The cars will let you do the same most of the time. So it's like you can choose whether to do it on the well charger or the app. I guess we'll try it without the app and plug it in and see if it works, Chris. Yeah, I mean it's if just, it burns your Tesla down to the ground. Exactly. You have a chance. Make sure it's in the garage first and that we uh Park some other so these here. these RFID cards, you can program them. Oh, to give you permission to charge. Yeah, something? and then like if you have this outside your house, yeah. you can just like swipe it. And you program the cards so they then people can't pull up to your driveway. Well, they have like plug sharing stuff now too, where you can. Yeah, but like, you have to be able to use the whatever. app to set up the RFID cards. Yeah, so. exactly. It's pretty snug. Mm, 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 uh, uh, mm, uh, it's red, so uh -oh. I don't think it's allowing it to charge. Hold on, let's. I think. Oh, you know what happened? You know what happened? I think it's in emergency stop mode. So we need to go like this. I need to go like this. Green. Green. 40 amps. Charging. Charging. 7 of 40. It'll. It starts lower and then it moves up. 18. Yeah. Is it gonna go to 40 though? It 32? will, it Ooh, will. Yeah. yeah, and then I'll so show you how many, many, so that's a 10 kilowatt charger. So 40 amps is 10 kilowatts, mm -hmm. about. And what are we at, 60%? Yeah, so nine kilowatts, but. Yeah. Um, so it works without the app. They just yeah. need a, they just need and a like Most EVs have something either in the car or on an app where you can manage. Like I could set it to less amps on here if I want. But it's not just this. Like a lot of uh, chargers have this issue where the apps don't work or, you know, you can't manage it from there or it stops charging for some reason. So it's like... I feel like it's better to just not even use the app for most of them and just use your car to manage the charging and the like schedule and all that. And these apps are really yeah. slow. If that blinking means it's charged. Probably. Because when this this will be done, that'll just do that. Does it show on the thing? No. Oh. I don't know why it's going slow, but usually I think that's blinking. I think that means it's done. Oh, yeah. uh, it says it's done. It says 81%. 81. It's not yeah. blinking. Oh, there you go. 85%. 85. Yeah. Look at that. And it's waterproof, so if it gets rained on. That's right. Yep. Because uh, a lot of people don't park them in their garages when they charge. So the worst is if you live somewhere cold. Yeah. Nice. So what do you think, Chris? You think it's a, it, the app sucks? Yeah. The app isn't the best, but... This fits but, pretty nicely. The cap's nice. And Chris, uh, Chris would know about the EV stuff because he's... Yeah, we it. got an EV van and Tesla. Had a Volt. Um, does it have a hanger on it, though? It does, but your pole is too wide. Oh, isn't wide enough? Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. You know what I mean. I know, yeah, I hear that a lot. So everything worked out really well with the charger i'm gonna say the charger itself is really good and i would recommend getting one but the app that comes with the charger from the company probably needs a lot of fine tuning 
and as Chris said, he has used a bunch of different EV chargers. And the best thing to do is just to use the app that comes with your hybrid or electric vehicle. So I'm gonna end the video here. If you like these videos, make sure to click the subscribe button, thumbs up, throw a comment below. As always, see you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.